Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Friday Vespers live stream. Tonight we have Abigail and one of our students, Papito, who lives on campus here with us, uh, joining us. Papito, it's really good to have you, man. Um, Papito is a senior, and I'm going to tell you lots about Papito tonight. He's going to share with you, but just to, you know, just to get started, we're glad to have you. Do you mind praying for us as we start? Of course. Let's pray. <coughs> Father God, I want to thank you for um, this Sabbath day that you've given us, Father, and for the rest that it provides. And um, Father, as we are going to take some time to praise your name now, I just ask that you would help us to lift our eyes heavenward and to focus on you, Father, and to just realize how much you love us. Thank you for all that you do for us each and every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, this evening we are, we're just glad you guys are tuning in with us. It's kind of almost become a tradition now here, and it's getting... It's just been a real blessing. We have this new format we're going to try tonight, and if you guys uh, don't like it, you can let us know, but if you like it, uh, be sure to give this a thumbs up and let us know. We have this book uh, that I borrowed from a friend, Then Sings My Soul, and this book is has the stories of the hymns that were written, and it just kind of gives a background to each hymn. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of time, extra time, and kind of read some of the stories before we sing the song. So in the first song we're going to start out with is um, Blessed Assurance. Now I want to be clear if um, we're going to get to some of these um, suggestions that I see. I see for the beauty of the earth and, and at the cross. So we, we have lots of that coming up. But we're just going to start out with Blessed Assurance. This, this song uh, was written by, the lyrics were written by Fanny Crosby. And this story goes, uh, one of Fanny Crosby's dearest friends was Phoebe Knapp. Uh, while, f while Fanny lived in the Manhattan slums and worked in rescue missions, Phoebe lived in the Knapp Mission, a palatial residence in Brooklyn where she entertained lavishly. She was an extravagant dresser with a wardrobe full of elaborate gowns and diamond terrors. Her music room contained one of the finest collections of instruments in the county, and Fanny was a frequent house guest. One day in 1873, while Fanny was staying at the Knapp Mansion, Phoebe said she had a tune she wanted to play. Going to the music room, she sat at the piano and played a new composition of her own, while the blind hymnist listened. Fanny immediately clapped her hands and exclaimed, Why, that's, why, that says blessed assurance. She quickly composed the words, and the great hymn was born. Many years later, um, Dwight L. Moody was preaching in New York at the 20. When at the 23rd Dutch Reformed Church. The Moody Sankey meetings had popularized Fanny Crosby's hymns around the world and made the blind poet a household name. But whenever she attended a Moody Sankey meeting, she refused to be recognized, disavowing acclaim. This day the church was so crowded she could find nowhere to sit. Moody's son, Will, seeing her, offered to find her a seat. To her bewilderment, he led her onto the platform just as the crowd was singing Blessed Assurance. Moody Sr. jumped to his feet, raised his hand, and interrupted the singing. Praise the Lord, he shouted. Here comes the authoress. Fanny took her seat amid thunderous ovations, humbly thanking God for making her a blessing to so many people. That's a very interesting story for this beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance. So why don't you all join us in singing Blessed Assurance as we get started. Sure, now burst on my 
I love that song so much, and that's uh, it's neat to have a story behind it. All right, the next song is It Is Well With My Soul. Uh, Pepita, why don't we have you start out this one when we, when we get to that, just to kind of like a mental prep thought. But It Is Well With My Soul is, yeah, I love this song so much. It has such a great message. All right, let's see what we got here. When the great Chicago fire consumed the windy city in 1871. Ah, Horatio, Mr. Spafford, okay, Mr. Spafford, an attorney heavily invested in real estate, lost a fortune. About that time, his only son, age four, succumbed to scarlet fever. Mr. Spafford drowned his grief in work, pouring himself into rebuilding the city and assisting the 100,000 who had been left homeless. In November of 73, 1873, that is, he decided to take his wife and daughters to Europe. Mr. Spafford was close to D.L. Moody and Mr. Sankey, and he wanted to visit their evangelistic meetings in England, then enjoy vacation. When an urgent matter detained Mr. Spafford in New York, he decided to send his wife, Anna, and their four daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie, on ahead. As he saw them settled into a cabin aboard the luxurious French liner, Via de Havard. Ooh, that was a bad pronunciation. But anyways, an uneasy sense filled his mind, and he moved them to a room closer to the bow of the ship. Then he said goodbye, promising to join them soon. During the small hours of November 22, 1873, as the Ville du Havard glided over the smooth sea, the passengers were jolted from their bunks. The ship had collided with an iron sailing vessel, and water poured in like Negra. The ship tilted dangerously. Screams, prayers, oaths merged into a nightmare of unmeasured terror. Passengers clung to posts, tumbled through darkness, and were swept away by powerful curtains of icy ocean. Loved ones fell from each other's grasp and disappeared into foaming blackness. Within two hours, the mighty ship vanished beneath the waters. The 226 fatalities included Maggie, Tanita, Annie, and Bessie. Mrs. Spafford was found nearly unconscious, clinging to a piece of wreckage. When the 47 survivors landed in Cardiff, Wales, she cabled her husband, saved alone. Mr. Spafford immediately booked passage to join his wife. En route, on a cold December night, the captain called him aside and said, I believe we are now passing over the place where the ship went down. Spafford went to his cabin, but found it hard to sleep. He said to himself, it is well. The will of God is done. He later wrote his famous hymn based on those words. The melody for It Is Well, titled Ville du Havard, was written by Philip Bliss, who himself soon was soon himself soon to perish along with his wife in a terrible train wreck in Ohio. Wow. Honestly, it's crazy how many of these hymns were born out of grief and like and hard times. And it gives it an interesting meaning when you're deeper meaning, I should say, not interesting, but when you think of 
the words, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Wow, that's strong. All right, Papito, you're good to take it away? Yep, sure. We'll join the chorus, okay? I've got to get the, the ladies part, and we'll like echo, is that all right? Okay, let's get this started. Shall we keep going, you guys? Um, we have lots of happy Sabbaths. I'm just going to pick up from, we have uh, people coming in from Brazil, and the Philippines, El Salvador. That's great, man. All right, let's just keep going here. We'll come to some suggestions in a couple of minutes, you guys. So do not fear. Um, take my life and let it be. How about that? Yeah? Um, let's see here. All right, although hymnist Frances Habergal, uh, age 36, had served the Lord for years, she felt something was missing in her Christian experience. Then, one day in 1873, this is the same year as the other one was written, interesting, she received a little book called All for Jesus, which steered the importance of making, a uh, sorry, it stressed the importance of making Christ the king of every corner and cubicle of one's life. Soon thereafter, she made a fresh and complete consecration of herself to Christ. Years later, when asked about it, she replied, Yes, it was an Advent Sunday, December 2, 1873. I first saw clearly the blessedness of true consecration. I saw it as a flash of electric light, and what you see, you can never unsee. 
There must be full surrender before there can be full blessedness. That's really profound. Not long afterwards, she found herself spending several days with ten people in a house, some of them unconverted. Others were Christians, but not fully surrendered to Christ. Lord, give me all in this house, she prayed. She went to work witnessing, and before she left, all ten were yielded Christians. On the last night of her visit, Francis, too excited to sleep, wrote this great consecration hymn, Take My Life. In the years that followed, Francis frequently used this hymn in her own devotions, especially every December 2nd on the anniversary of her consecration. On one occasion, as she pondered the words, Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my king, she felt she could give up her secular concerts. Her beautiful voice was in demand, and she frequently sang with the Philharmonic. But from that moment on, her lips were exclusively devoted to the songs of the Lord. On another occasion, she was praying over the stanza that says, Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I would hold. She had accumulated a great deal of jewelry, but she now felt she should donate it to the Church Missionary Society. Writing to a friend, she said, I retain only a brooch for daily wear, which is a memorial to my dear parents. Also a locket with the holy portrait I have of my niece in heaven. And I had no idea I had such a jewelry shop. Nearly 50 articles are being packed off. <laughs> wow. Take my life and let it be always only for my king. This is great. Let's get started, you guys. Uh, we'll go to key of F, maybe with a little key change. Ah, no, let's pop it down. Oh, that's actually low. <laughs> yeah, we'll go. Sorry. Let's get my head. Consecrated Lord to Thee, take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and. take a page from our viewer's book. Um, I see a couple <clears throat> ah, this is a good one. We have a lot of them, honestly. So, But let's try um, Tissel Sweet to Trust in Jesus. <clears throat> this one was suggested by Jessa Ooh. Jessa Fajilan? I don't know. I really don't speak anything except Canadian, so <laughs> super sorry about that. Anyways, let's take, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. 
to trust him more. I think that's, <laughs> that's the important line for me personally right now. Like, whew, this world is going pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie. But I loved it too. It said, um, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, yeah. but still over grace to, to trust, trust him, him more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, trust is like, yeah. I can always be more. Be more, <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's take another one, shall we? Oh, yes. Boom, how great that was. Shall we do this? Let me just make sure nothing's going crazy in our, in our chat room here. Um, good, good, good. Oh, I have a couple requests for day by day, so that'll be, we could do that one. I hear you, Huckleberry Poor, poor Ball. Wow, okay, that's quite the username. <laughs> but yeah, I hear day by day, and also Jade and Joseph, day by day. All right, um, so we'll do day by day, and then how great that was. How about that? Um, help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting air to take us from the Father's hand. Nothing can take us from the hand of Jesus. Remember that. Nothing at all. All right. Um, mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Oh, 
by day and with each passing moment strength I find to meet my trials here trusting in my Father's wise bestowment I've no cause for worry or for fear He whose heart is kind beyond all Let's do how great that works, shall we? <clears throat> then sings my soul. All right, let's see what we got here for a story. This is written by a Swedish minister. Carl Boberg, a 26-year-old Swedish minister, wrote this poem, which he called Almighty God. The words literally translated to English said, When I, the world, consider which thou hast made by thine almighty word, and how the web of life thou wisdom guideth, and all creation feedeth at thy board. Then doth my soul burst forth in song of praise, O great God, O great God. That's pretty cool. So that's the direct English translation of the Swedish. All right. Let's see here. Hearing this hymn in Russia... Oh, sorry, I skipped part. So this Mr. Karl Boberg, his poem was published and forgotten, or so he thought. Several years later, Karl was surprised to hear it being sung to the tune of an old Swedish melody. But the poem and hymn did not achieve widespread fame. Hearing this hymn in Russian, English missionary Stuart Hine was so moved, he modified and expanded the words and made his own arrangement of the Swedish melody. He later said his first three verses were inspired line upon line by Russia's rugged Carpathian mountains. The first verse was composed when he was caught in a thunderstorm in Carpathian village. The second, as he heard the birds sing near the Romanian border. And the third, as he witnessed many of the Carpathian mountain dwellers coming to Christ. The final verse was written by Dr. Hine, or was written after Dr. Hine returned to Great Britain. Sometime later, Dr. J. Edward Orr heard How Great Thou Art being sung by 
Nag Naga tribes people in Assam in India and decided to bring it to America for use in his own meetings. When he introduced it at a conference in California, it had he oh it came to the attention of music publishers. Tim Spencer, who contacted Mr. Hine and had the song copyrighted. It was published and recorded. Wow. During the 1954 Billy Graham crusade in the big arena in George, oh yeah, when George Beverly Shea was given a leaflet containing this hymn, he sang it to himself and shared it with an, another member of the Graham team. Though not used in London, it was introduced the following year to audiences in Toronto, Canada. Hey, check that out. In the New York Crusade of 1957, it was sung by Bev Shea 99 times with the choir joining the majestic refrain, Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Well, that's kind of a little bit long, but that is really interesting to see how hymns are not just sometimes born. Just normally they like go around the circle first. A Swedish hymn by Carl Borb, Bob Boberg. All right, let's see what we got, you guys. Right. 
Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. People know this is live, not pre-recorded. <laughs> All right. Wow. I see everybody in the whole world wants Master of the Wind. I literally can't even. I don't know if you can see this, but like literally everybody's Master of the Wind. Um, well, I was thinking while we were singing that that I would say, no, well, let's wait until Ryan comes back because like guitar, right? Sorry, guys, I'm a cheap substitute for Ryan. I don't play guitar. Oh, come on. Come on. No, no, no. He plays cello, people. Actually, I probably should have said that because now everybody. <laughs> Dude, literally, people are like, Ma okay, Master of the Wind. Here we go. I, uh, there's nothing else we can do. We like that one, too. No, we like Master <laughs> of the Wind. Yeah, let's be very, very clear. Um, but um, we just, um, yeah, it's like a campfire song. Anyways, here we go. Um, we got some lyrics for that, or is that a no-go? I know the master of the wind I know the maker of the rain He can calm the storms Make the sun to shine again I know the master of the wind My boat of life sails on a troubled sea Whenever there's a wind in my sails But I have a friend who watches over me Sometimes I soar like an eagle to the sky. Among the peaks, my soul can be found. An unexpected storm may drive me from my heights, brings me lower, but never brings me down. I know the master of the There you go, Master of the Wind for Huckleberry Purball and everybody else that wanted Master of the Wind. I'm glad that you guys are tuning on and are just singing along with us, so <coughs> this is good. All right, 
let us go. Now let's see if we can um, let's grab another one from this little storybook and see if we can get another get another song. Oh yeah, check this out. 1887, Justin Obey. This is great. All right. The story goes like this. Daniel B. Towner, who wrote the melody to this song, inherited his love of music from his father, Professor J.G. Towner, a beloved vocalist and music teacher. Okay? While growing up, Daniel studied with some of, his, of the finest musicians available and began his career as worship leader in a Methodist church in Binghamton, New York. He later served churches in Ohio and Kentucky before being taped by evangelist Dwight L. Moody in the fall of 1885. For several years, Daniel uh, traveled with Moody singing and doing personal work. He once explained how this hymn came to be written. So this is the son of that musician dude. Mr. Moody was conducting a series of meetings in Brockton, Massachusetts, he writes, and I had the pleasure of singing from there, for, for him there. Excuse me. One night, a young man rose in a testimony meeting and said, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to trust and I'm going to obey. I just jotted those, that sentence down and sent it with the little story to Reverend J.H. Samus, a Presbyterian minister. Samus wrote a poem based on the phrase trust and obey and sent it back to Towner, who went to work on the music. Alfred Smith, in his Treasury of Hymn Stories, adds that while working on the music to trust and obey, Dr. Towner grew discouraged. That evening in his home, he crumpled up the paper and threw it, the manuscript into the wastebasket. Wow. The next morning, as his wife was straightening his office, she retrieved the crumpled paper and sang over the words melody to herself. She lifted it on the organ and encouraged her husband to work on it some more, telling him, I feel the melody you have written is just what it needed to carry the message. In 1893, Dr. Towner became head of the music department of the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago, where he trained hundreds of young people to lead worship and minister to the Lord in music. He wrote the melodies of some of our favorite hymns, including At Calvary, My Anchor Holds, and Grace Greater Than Our Sins. He also compiled 14 hymn books and wrote several textbooks. Wow. That's amazing. So trust and obey almost didn't happen, as we know it at least. But I know God has a hand. God has a hand in all of these songs because they're ministering for Him. All right, let's see what we got here with trust and obey. Trust and obey. 
see if we have a, another one from the audience. Wow, I see. Um, it looks like we basically got like um, people ganging up on this song and then just like sending it hard. Um, basically, that's happening right now with um, In the Heart of Jesus. Uh, that one goes, In the Heart of Jesus, there's a girl. You might not know it, but it's okay. We'll just send it. All right. Not to be unsympathetic, but like I'm just saying you don't need to worry. Um, you know, that's going to be a really bad hymn or bad um, key to play it in. So I'm going to. Friends. 
glad people have like good songs to suggest because that has some pretty good words. I just kind of failed to pick a good key, so I apologize to you guys. A little bit kind of just like Wild West sending it over here. Anyways, let's see if we can find some more suggestions as we continue. All right, near still near. It looks like is a great suggestion, and then we might do the Sabbath song, and we might yeah, we we'll probably be able to fit one more in there. almost six so let's just roll this out of a song thank you everyone for your suggestions <clears throat> I appreciate you guys um, basically joining in okay some people got pretty carried away and you know we um, we'll work on that we'll just ask the Holy Spirit to bless our chat you know 
but uh, we just thank you guys for being here and supporting us and joining with us, because this isn't about us at all. This is about the music that we're doing and the hope that it brings. So <clears throat> this last song, you've probably heard it a thousand times, but this is how we end every single Friday night at Fountain View Academy. Uh, Papito is a senior here at Fountain View, and unfortunately his class has gone all over the country, all over the world, literally. Um, and this is a really special thing that, as students, we do together, and so it's just something we're going to continue doing until, until Jesus comes. So here we go. <laughs>
then when I fly away and me have Amen. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. You guys are such a awesome group to join up with, and I hope that you will be safe until next next Sabbath and next Friday night, I should say. And we'll see you then. God bless and be safe. Happy Sabbath.